Hello everybody, Drew England and John Angel back here from Nine Line uh, to present some frequently asked questions we often receive to uh, 911 compliance as it relates to uh, specifically schools and universities. So that first frequently asked question we often receive is do these laws and regulations apply to all schools and universities in the United States? And basically, if your school or your university currently uses an MLTS, otherwise known as a multi-line telephone system, or a VoIP, otherwise known as Voice Over Internet Protocol System on campus? The short answer is yes. The FCC requires all organizations utilize those phone systems to comply with two laws uh, known as Carey's Law and Ray Balms Act. So that's gonna apply to all schools and all states and all those buildings, floors, classrooms, offices, are all connected by MLTS or a Voice Over Internet Protocol system. So what happens if my school or university doesn't comply? Uh, the biggest thing, if your school is not in compliance, is it's really about the lives of your employees and your students. Um, they are being put in danger. But when we talk about the expansive scale and size of these school and university campuses, when you're able to send first responders to that dispatchable location, it's going to improve their response time and it's going to improve the outcome of those situations. Now, you do have the other side of it with the financial aspect. So when we talk about if you're not in compliance, you are looking at civil lawsuits and liabilities. So, you know, we don't like to harp on the financial side of it. But when you look at the Carey's Law ruling, um, that hotel chain had to do a 40 some odd million dollar payout to her family. Um, so there is a serious financial aspect to this uh, when we're talking from the FCC perspective. Uh, if your organization is reported by the PSAP or the local first responders, there's a $10,000 fine from the FCC, and then it's $500 a day after that until your organization gets in full compliance. So, for example, we've heard it before where a CIO or someone at the school or university is working late after hours, they have a heart attack at their desk, there's no one on campus there to assist them or help, um, they're able to dial 911 from the phone, but they can't speak or talk, right? Sending that dispatchable location is going to save that person's life. Uh, rather than first responders going on a wild goose egg hunt through campus or through the building even, being able to send a descriptive uh, address giving that dispatchable location in addition to the front street address is going to improve the response time and potentially save that person's life. And that's what we really like to focus on is the technology really does help save lives. Um, you've obviously got the financial litigation side of it as well, but this technology really can help save lives at the end of the day. Um, other situations that we're talking about, in addition to medical emergencies, um, if you have a student violence or heaven forbid an active shooter, uh, domestic situations, building incidents, things of that nature, being able to send that dispatchable location is going to improve those outcomes uh, for those 911 calls. Thanks, John. So that's going to bring us to our next frequently asked question, which involves the requirements of Carrie's Law. So there's three main requirements to Carrie's Law. First, your phone system must allow a user to dial 911 without any added prefixes or extensions, and especially that's important in those K-12 through schools. Uh, say, for example, if there's, you know, an active shooter or something like that within a school where, you know, it comes down to a child having to dial 911. In most cases, they're not going to know about any added prefixes or extensions because we've instilled in their brains that dial 911 in case of an emergency. So it's increasingly important to be able to just dial 911 and that's it. And that brings us back to how Carrie's law even came about. Uh, Carrie's estranged husband attacked her. And her children were in another room and they were trying to dial 911, but they had to uh, dial a prefix or extension and they weren't aware of that. So that's how we came up with Carrie's law. So then our next requirement is a notification has to be sent when 911 is called, you know, including information about the caller, where they are, a phone number to reach that 911 caller to somebody on staff faculty. Um, so, you know, that's important as well, too, because you know, we have to alert everybody else on staff that, uh, you know, there's an emergency that needs to be taken care of, and then we can alert our first responders as well. And then that third requirement is a valid callback number, not the main uh, university or school phone number has to be provided when 911 is called. So if a disconnection uh, occurs, that main dispatcher has to be able to directly call that person and need back. So, you know, it goes back to a children or a faculty member they get disconnected from the dispatcher, how's that person going to be able to reach, you know, back 
that dispatcher again. So that dispatcher has to be able to reconnect directly back to that person in need. So what are the requirements of Ray Bombs Act? Ray Bombs Act is going to require a dispatchable location to be included when 911 is dialed. So a dispatchable location begins with the building street address plus additional info such as a room number, a floor number, or other relevant info to help those first responders find the caller. So we always recommend take a look at your signage as it stands today. When first responders are coming out of an elevator, getting out of a stairwell, um, what signage are they going to see that's going to help give them some direction? The other thing here is we know how expansive these school campuses are. Start at a high level to get compliant. Ray Bombs Act is a little vague on purpose to give you some flexibility. So you can start as granular as, you know, second floor, east wing, west wing, whatever it may be. And over time, your team can take the, uh, the project on to get more granular all the way down to the room or cubicle number. Uh, but we just want to give some type of dispatchable information that's going to help them find that caller inside the building. So nine line software is going to insert that additional information in real time on the screen for the 911 dispatcher. So we're going to pass that along so they're able to communicate that to those first responders. When we take a look at Ray Bombs Act deeper, there's two parts to it. So the first part rolled out in 2021. That's for all your on-premise phones. Ray Bombs Act said in 2021, you had to be sending a dispatchable location for all on-premise phones. And now as of 2022, that scope has been expanded to include your remote workers as well. So we know these days we have a lot of hybrid or full-time work from home workforce. So with those remote workers, we need to send a dispatchable location. So they need to be able to say, I'm working from my house when I dial 911, don't send police or first responders to campus, right? For example, I'm working at my home, I've got a hard MRA phone here on my desk, a soft jabber and WebEx phone on my laptop. I have to be able to say that these phones are not working from campus, they're working here on my desk. So in the event, maybe my phone's in the other room or it's charging and I have a medical emergency, if I need to use one of these phones to dial 911, it needs to be able to send my home address. So John brought up a dispatch of location. And then that brings about our next frequently asked question is, can there be a dispatch of location within a school or specifically a college university with many buildings? So short answer there is yes, there most certainly can. A dispatch of location, like John mentioned, begins with a street address plus any other information like a room number, floor number, cubicle number, things like that, that's gonna help first responders find that caller. So our prime example we often like to give is, is a college campus. So there's many buildings, those buildings have many floor numbers, many room numbers, uh, many offices, and they're all connected by MLTS or a voice over internet protocol system. So short answer is yes, there most certainly can be a dispatch location, even in a single building campus or a multi-building campus. Just make sure you have all your signage correct, and then you can have an appropriate dispatch location on your school campus. And another thing that we always like to talk about when we're talking about some common misconceptions around 911 compliance for schools and universities, we see a lot of universities that say, well, we have Cisco Emergency Responder or CER, we should be compliant. And that's not really the case. CER does a good job of storing the location of those on-premise phones, but it does not send that location to the PSAP. So you're either gonna need to utilize a solution like ours, or you're going to have to manually be updating every time you move a phone with your carrier. You're going to have to update that information every time. Um, sometimes there's a cost associated with that, and it's not in real time. It can take 24 to 48 hours for that phone location to update. Uh, with Nine Line, we're going to fully automate that process. So anytime your phone moves, we're going to be able to track that and send that location to the PSAP when 911 is dialed on your behalf. Um, gives you guys the peace of mind and fully automates that process for your IT department as well. CER also does not cover your remote users, which are now in scope of Ray Bombs Act as well. There is the off-premise user portal, uh, but that doesn't show up or become available in CER until you're pointed to a, serv uh, a service such as Nine Line. So something to keep in mind there. The other misconception or question we get a lot is going to be around cell phones. So what if someone, whether student or faculty on your staff, uh, what if they have Jabber or WebEx Teams on their cell phone? 
uh, that dialer is actually going to automatically break those calls out through the LTE network. So good news for you there. Um, that's not going to be in scope for your 911 project. Those apps are going to know to break those calls out through the LTE. That being said, when we talk about nine line and our model of being able to get folks compliant at the most affordable price point, we do not charge by device. So when we talk about laptops, um, hard phones, whether in the office or taking home, you know, I'm working in my office here at my house. I've got a hard MRA phone on my desk, two soft phones on my laptop. Nine line covers unlimited devices per user. Um, so we're always going to have you covered there, but just a good to know that when it comes to cell phones, those are automatically going to break out through LTE and those are not included in the scope of compliance. So um, some good news there for those orgs that are out there. All right, that's all John and I had for today in terms of frequently asked questions as they specifically rate, relate to schools and college universities. So if anybody has anything else they would like answered, you can always visit our website. That's 9line911.com, the number 9-L-I-N-E, the number 911.com. Uh, feel free to fill out a contact form in there. We're always happy to answer any questions that anybody might have and uh, even meet with someone if they have any questions as well. So thanks everyone and have a great day.